Welcome back to California Cooking. Today, I'm giving you some easy yet elevated ideas for any Christmas celebration. This dish is good any time of day. It's a croque madame. Then I'm making lobster and shrimp pot pies. And finally, Levi and I are stirring up a homemade white hot chocolate. I love cooking up big brunches during the holidays and nothing is more decadent than a croque madame. Take a look. You know when you wake up on Christmas morning, picture it snowing, but not here in Southern California, but you, you want to get cozy. You want something really yummy for either breakfast or brunch. And my mom would always make a big late breakfast uh, on Christmas morning. And I thought this would be the perfect thing any day, uh, but it's a croque madame. And croque monsieur, you know, is the French sandwich where it's got the bechamel sauce on top but a croque madame is when it has an egg on top. So it's the perfect breakfast brunch. And it's, it's decadent because of the bechamel, but I'm gonna cut this beautiful sourdough bread that I found at the grocery store. It's rosemary sourdough. You could of course use regular, but I think that's gonna add some extra flavor to this. I've had these sandwiches when I got the chance to go to Paris about 10 years ago and had the coolest trip ever, and we got to eat all of those things that you associate with Paris, like crepes, and and this is, you know, what they'd serve at those kind of French bistros, and it is just perfection. So I got my bread slices. I did two different ways. I think I like this longer slice than the shorter slice. It doesn't matter. And honestly, sometimes it's better to have the bakery just cut it into slices for you. But traditionally, what would be in a croque madame au monsieur is some Dijon mustard. And then I grated some Gruyere cheese and Gruyere is so yummy. You can find it in the grocery store. Usually it's over by, you know where they have the cheese case that has a little bit of the fancier cheeses. That's where I found this. And I went ahead and grated it with my box grater. Uh, some lovely ham. This is a black forest ham. If you're vegetarian, you could you know, you could put, um, you know, grilled onions or something like that. Caramelized onions, I mean. On goes the lid. And then what you're gonna do is, just like you would with a grilled cheese, it's that preparation, but then you top it with bechamel, and you put it in the oven, and then you put an egg on top. So let's take it back here and grill up some sandwiches. In this skillet, we're gonna make the bechamel. And what I thought would be nice to kind of start the bechamel, which is kind of a creamy sauce. It starts with a roux with butter and with flour, but I have just a half a shallot in there with a bit of butter. And I just think that'll be a nice base for the sauce just to give it a little extra flavor. And then to that, to make a roux, it's butter and flour. So I'm gonna do, let's say four tablespoons of butter. I want to make sure I have plenty of roux. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of flour. And then take my whisk and you just want to melt that down. You want to cook out the raw flour taste. And then over here, I've got a griddle. You could use a nonstick pan. Uh, this is where I'm going to do our, in essence, grilled cheeses before we put the bechamel on top. Same thing. A little butter, it is French food after all. To that, get those guys on there. And this is what you want, you want the butter to melt. You want the flour to just cook out a little bit before you add in your milk. Okay, now, take your whisk. And you wanna break up all of those clumps of flour. You want this to be a smooth sauce, and at first it's nerve wracking. You think it's not gonna come together. But just give it a sec, and then you wanna bring it up to a boil. That's when it'll thicken, and we should have a thick cream sauce. I always get nervous when I make a bechamel. And then to our bechamel, we wanna flavor it. So some garlic powder. I'm gonna add some garlic powder. And always in a white sauce, especially a bechamel, nutmeg. And I think nutmeg is so beautiful during the holidays, but a fat pinch, some salt, some pepper, 
Some people like white pepper in their bechamel. I don't mind seeing black pepper in here. Okay, let's get back to, look at that thick sauce. And this is where you modify. You go, okay, it's a little too thick, it's a little too thin. I'm gonna add some more milk until you get the right consistency. To flavor this even more, cheese. Rest of our Gruyere, put it on in, and then I got some grated Parmesan. And Parmesan's so nutty and salty. Perfect. I'll stir that in, and that's it. You've got a bechamel ready for your croque madame. Done. You can turn it off. Okay, there we go. Look at that cheese sauce. Yum. Okay, over to these guys. Instead of buttering the bread, I just add the butter straight to the griddle. Look at that golden brown. Beautiful. Our grilled cheese portion of the recipe is done. So now I'm gonna put it on a baking sheet, and here's what you do. The oven is hot. It's on about 450. Here we go. This, this is the croque monsieur part. Bechamel. Load it up. Don't be shy. Before we place it in the oven, you could top with the Gruyere. I have some leftover parm, so I'm gonna hit it with that. In it goes. Still got a hot griddle onto our egg. So I'm gonna do a fried egg. You could certainly do a poached egg, but fried eggs are easier. One egg, two eggs. Salt. Salt. Pepper. Oh my gosh, look at these beauties. You just keep them in the oven until it starts to bubble and brown. It smells heavenly. So here's how you would serve it. Croque monsieur. Now, croque madame. That's the difference. I just wanna have a little bit of time. I just think a little fresh time would look pretty. The perfect Christmas breakfast or brunch. Look at that, you've cut into that yolk. This is something I would only get at a restaurant and it was so easy to make at home. with my beret on. Not bad for my first try, and with the croque madame or croque monsieur, it's all about the bechamel sauce. If you want the complete recipe, check us out on Instagram at KTLA California Cooking. Coming up, Levi and I are whipping up the coziest homemade white hot chocolate with an edible snowflake. But first, I'm making individually sized lobster and shrimp pot pies that would be perfect for your Christmas Eve dinner. That's coming up next. Most gatherings are gonna be a lot smaller this Christmas, but you still wanna make it special, so I think the perfect recipe would be a lobster and shrimp pot pie. I think it's so special on Christmas Eve to make something that maybe you wouldn't have the rest of the year. So I'm going to try my hand at a lobster shrimp pot pie. Store-bought pie crusts make it easy on ourselves, but a little bit fancy too. I never buy lobster. It's too expensive and too fancy uh, for my taste. But one lobster tail, not that expensive, and that's enough for our pot pie. Um, and I just popped it in the broiler, couple of minutes, hit it with some olive oil and some salt, done. Over here, I've got some shrimp, I need to cook those. And then for the veggies, I have some leeks. And the thing about leeks, so the way I like to clean them, the problem with leeks is they get dirt in here. So you wanna cut them, slice them, and kind of take them under the faucet and run water through them. Because you don't want sandy grit in your leeks. So that's what I did. I just kind of ran them under the faucet and made sure it's good to go. So I'm gonna chop that up into, bite-sized pieces, and honestly, there is definitely something different about a leek versus an onion. It is in the onion family, but 
a white onion just doesn't have that kind of distinct flavor like a leek does. And over here I have some shallot, just one shallot, and I'm gonna cook these, get them started with some butter and some olive oil. So this is gonna be the base of our pot pie, and then we're gonna add a whole bunch of flavorings. And the one thing, also kind of fancy and special, this is saffron. Saf saffron is the most expensive spice in the world. That's what they say. It's the stamen of a flower. And I got this just at the regular grocery store, but look, that's all that comes in there. $14 for this. Um, but it, it adds something that you can't get from any other spice. You can absolutely omit it. You don't need it, but I just thought that might be a special ingredient to add. So let's get started. We'll cook up our veg and make some pot pie. So I've got my shallots and my leeks cooking. In here I've got maybe two tablespoons of butter, little bit of olive oil because olive oil will keep things from burning. It brings the smoke point higher so you don't burn your butter. And then to that, some salt and pepper. And you want to flavor every layer. We'll let that cook down until it's soft. So I happen to have a little bottle of Prosecco open. With seafood, a little white wine, even sherry. They say sherry's really great with lobster, but I don't have sherry. So just a little extra, whatever you have open. And then that'll help soften those vegetables. So to this, because I want to make a sauce. So I'm going to do a pretty hefty tablespoon of flour. You want to let it cook for a second because you want to take that raw flour taste out. And then to our vegetables, I have some seafood stock and I also have some clam juice. But I like to add it whenever I do kind of a bouillabaisse, a fish stock, whatever, to add a little bit of that. So I'm gonna add the whole thing. Seafood stock going in. I did almost the whole box. I'm gonna stir this and bring it up to a, a slow boil because I wanna thicken the sauce a little bit. Okay, so I forgot to add my garlic when I was sauteing my onions. That's the thing, I've not made this before. And sometimes when you make something for the first time, you miss a few things. Grate that in. This is where you wanna add your saffron. So from this packet, I think I'm gonna do about half. And it's gonna give it a beautiful color too. Turn it down, this is now coming to a little bit of a boil. We don't want it to boil too much. Okay, now that our sauce is thickened up a bit, I'm gonna put in our raw shrimp. Let that go before I add in my lobster because we already cooked the lobster. Came out of the shell so easy. Let that shrimp cook so fast, just a couple of minutes until it turns pink. Heavy cream. It's the holidays. You gotta add a little, some a little decadence to your recipes. And then just let that simmer for a minute. Now, uh, some peas. Our lobster, just to warm it through, but we don't want to cook it anymore. So I turned it off, and then fresh tarragon. Done. Now, let's make our pie dough, and we'll put together our pot pies. Okay, so I filled my ramekins. These are the large ramekins that you can get pretty much anywhere. And if you don't have them, just put it in a big baking dish, or you could even do it in the pot. Sometimes I'll leave the pot like this and I'll just place my dough inside. Now our store-bought pie dough. You can go ahead and knock yourself out and make pie dough. I'm just not very good at, <laughs> at it. So I'm gonna skip that step and I'll roll it out just to make it a little thinner. So the way you measure your dough is you would take this ramekin, you'd flip it over and you'd trace a size slightly bigger. So I'm gonna take a butter knife. Let's just say this, you want more dough than less because less would just fall inside and not be good. Okay, so I take a little egg wash so it sticks. A little egg wash around the side here. Put the ramekin and there we go. And then we just Tuck it around, nothing fancy, done. Easy, easy, you guys. Okay, do another one. Now, to let the steam out, because that's always a thing when you're baking a pie. Just put a 
slit, slit, slit. And then you brush it with more egg wash so that it gets nice and browned. And what's great about these, everything is cooked inside. So the only thing you're doing is just getting this pie dough nice and brown and cook through. A Little bit of kosher salt on top, some cracked pepper, and they're ready to go in the oven. Our pot pie, look at that. It is so cute. Little green salad. And I love that they're individual. I think that makes it so special. Creamy, comforting, and so delicious. And let's be honest, I don't know anyone that doesn't like a good pot pie. Coming up, Levi and I get in the holiday spirit and we're making homemade white hot chocolate. That's coming up next. Whether you're decorating the tree, watching a Christmas movie, or baking cookies, nothing hits the spot like a warm mug of hot chocolate. But this year, I decided to make a homemade white hot chocolate with an edible snowflake. Take a look. Hi, Mr. Claus. How you doing? Santa Claus likes to eat sweets. Santa Claus loves to eat sweets, so you're a guy right after his own heart. He loves sweets just like you. We've got big marshmallows, and we've got little marshmallows, and we've got white chocolate chips. What do you think we're gonna do? Focus. Yes, we're gonna make white hot chocolate, and gonna we're gonna focus. do the cutest thing with our marshmallows. We're gonna do this. So let me show you. We're gonna make this look like a snowflake. Okay. What do you think? And so you go all the way around. And you put these little marshmallows. Can you give me another How one? cute! And then we're gonna hang it on our cup with the white hot chocolate. Now, yeah, here, let me move. Um, Sorry, babe. So usually we do hot chocolate, but we do dark chocolate or milk chocolate. But I thought it'd be fun to try a white hot chocolate. And I know a lot, I mean, I used to buy my hot chocolate until I realized how easy it is to make homemade hot chocolate. It's just warm your milk and put in your chocolate chips. That's it. Of course, you could add some cinnamon or vanilla or booze. But, um. You don't want to put booze in it. But it's so easy and it tastes so much better than stuff you'd buy at the store. Look, look, mommy. Yeah. <laughs> Yours looks a little squished, but I like it, babe. Good job. But yes. I'm gonna eat the hot chocolate. I know. See, around the holidays, actually always, Levi is Mr. Sweet Tooth, so we've gotta pace ourselves, you know what I mean? To give some sweets to somebody. I'm sorry. Look, a little snowflake that's misshapen. But we're gonna hang it on our mug, and I think it'll look I'm like- I'm gonna make a spaceship. All right, let's do more. I'm gonna make a spaceship. Let's do a few more. By the way, I have my milk, whole milk on the back in a pot, just very slow, slow simmer. Nothing's in it yet. I'm just warming my milk. I think it's easier to do the toothpicks first and then add your I made a, I made a satellite. Oh, it does look like a satellite. So we're gonna make the hot chocolate, and all I'm gonna do is add these white chocolate chips, maybe a little vanilla. They're not really that white. These are minis, so they'll melt really fast. Okay? Yeah. So our milk is warm. I've probably got two cups of milk, and I'm gonna just whisk in my white chocolate chips. Splash of vanilla. And that's it. I didn't know what you said. They already melted, we've got hot chocolate. Levi, I just tasted, by the way, that hot chocolate took, I don't know, 15 seconds to make. That was so, and it's so good, you guys. I just took a little taste. Okay, so in goes our white hot chocolate. Can I have your mug, please? Fill it up. I'm gonna put the marshmallow in the, in the inside. Yum. Oh, we made the perfect amount. 
Okay, but watch what mommy's gonna do. Watch, we did something really cute over here. So I'm gonna take a sharp knife, make a little slit in our snowflake. And my How cute is this guy? Look at our snowflake hot, white hot chocolate. This is fun. One for Levi. White hot chocolate. I'm gonna drink it. With a snowflake. One for you. Wouldn't Santa love this one too? One for me. Can I get a cheers? Can I get a cheers, my love? Can I lift it? That literally tastes like it. What does it taste like? It tastes like... White chocolate. Mmm. That's very good. See, that's what the holiday's all about. Just getting in the kitchen and having fun with someone you love. Well, I want to wish all of you and your families a very Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time. Remember we went sledding? Do you remember we went sledding? Yeah. And tell everybody what daddy, do you remember how daddy went so fast down the hill? And he fell off his sled? Remember you did too? I probably did too, yeah. We can put my lip on it. I think white hot chocolate's our new thing. So we're gonna do that another day. Yeah. I'm not, I feel like I'm not gonna eat this or drink all of this at one day. That's probably best. This will take a whole year to eat.